Do other civilizations apart from ours exist in the universe with more advanced interplanetary communication and a network of interconnected cultures? These are the thoughts that everyone is having as a result of the discovery of radio signals originating from a very far distance by scientists. Whatever they are, they are definitely fascinating. These explosions are coming from a far-off extreme and strange location, but there is still a lot to discover about their peculiar provenance. One of the largest recent discoveries is that this is only the second time researchers have detected a repeated signal of this kind. What is making all these mysterious space signals? Are they something to be feared or something to be thrilled about? Let's find out. Fast radio bursts, FRBs, are the explosion that have drawn the attention of scientists in recent years, but their origin remains a mystery. The signals are potent and transient. They sneak up on our telescopes in the night sky from all angles. Most are one-time events that never occur again. A small number of repeating FRBs have appeared multiple times. What are these fast radio bursts? Fast radio bursts are blasts of radio energy that go over space and are both very brief and very intense. They only survive for a few milliseconds, but in that brief period, they produce as much energy as the sun does in a year. The blast of energy is constant through that very short period and at different frequencies. But from where do they originate? There is no way to tell for sure. Beyond the fact that these unexplained explosions are not of our own galaxy, but rather from the depths of space, billions of light years distant, little is known about what might have caused them. They also attack us from above, so they come from everywhere. The most recent blasts are noteworthy in part because this is only the second time we have detected a recurring blast. Typically, they emanate from different locations, necessitating a thorough sky scan in search of them. The approximate beginnings of FRBs in the vast mansion that is our universe have been traced by astronomers using the best available data. Only one of them has emerged thus far from within our own Milky Way, whereas nearly all of them originate from faraway galaxies. Astronomers are still unable to determine who or how the crime was committed, and they are unsure of the precise nature of the astronomical objects responsible for these potent radio wave emissions. Are they being sent by extraterrestrials? According to some, this is the case, or, at the very least, we should consider the possibility. According to Avi Loeb of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, it is important for people to consider the possibility that extraterrestrial civilizations are communicating with us. Given their brief length and remote origin, fast radio bursts are exceptionally brilliant, and we haven't found any potential natural sources. It is worth thinking about and investigating an artificial genesis. If so, the civilization sending the blast our way is probably not like our own. Among other things, it would have needed to have created a planet-sized transmitter to send the messages across the galaxy and towards us. Although that is beyond our own capacity, Professor Loeb has suggested that it is not physically impossible and probably might be achieved by a sufficiently evolved civilization. Even if there are aliens on the other end, it doesn't necessarily follow that the blasts are communications being delivered by those extraterrestrials. He suggested in 2017 that we might actually be picking up stray blasts that are being used to propel enormous spacecraft across the universe, since the extreme blast of energy we experience is potent enough to drive enormous ships over even greater distances. If that's the case, the transmitter would need to be aiming its beam at the ship's location in space. But since the ship, the transmitter, and its destination would all be in constant motion, there's a chance it might miss, and the blast could still come through and harm us. That would account for some of the FRB's most remarkable characteristics, such as the way they seem to approach us randomly and from different locations in the sky. Or, what else could they possibly be? 
The hypothesis that the bursts are originating from an alien civilization is not as appealing to many other experts. But the fact remains that whatever it is, it must be very strange and most likely unlike anything we have ever seen. It must also be relatively small and extremely energetic. For instance, they might be ejected by the Magnetar class of neutron stars, a tiny but powerful star. Others have proposed that they might be the result of a star entering a black hole destabilizing as it's ripped apart and ejecting the brief explosions. But astronomers have discovered a brand new, intriguing hint. Several billion light years away from Earth, a team of researchers has discovered a new FRB, and this one is stranger than all the others. Most bursts only survive for a few moments, throbbing so rapidly that they briefly appear as brilliant as galaxies before dissipating. However, the duration of this radio wave emission was three full seconds, or roughly 1,000 times longer. Additionally, the broadcast itself had an odd quality. Within the three-second burst, astronomers found tiny pulses that peaked every 0.2 seconds or so. A previous FRB source had been found by researchers. It produced millisecond-long flickers for a number of days before quieting down and then restarting again. The flashes, though, happened at random. The signal itself had never before displayed such a fine rhythm. In the FRB world, this is certainly big news. Sarah Burke Spolor, an astronomer at West Virginia University who studies FRBs and was not involved in the new detection, said. The main question we are still after with FRB is, what is making them? A strict periodicity like this would be major. Such a pattern's presence lends credence to a mounting evidence that a neutron star, the relic core of a once giant star that has exhausted its fuel, is the source of FRBs. A pulsar, a neutron star that rotates quickly and shoots radiation from its poles, said Professor Plum. Miss Scarlett said it could also be a magnetar, a type of neutron star distinguished by its intense magnetic fields. It is very difficult to contrive a natural clock like that, but pulsars are the only known emitting objects with enough momentum to behave that way," Burke Spolar said. The FRB could not be firmly linked to a pulsar by the detection researchers. They also don't have a convincing justification for why this signal was so strong. Perhaps when a pulsar approached Earth, intangible gravitational forces boosted its emissions, making them look brighter to radio telescopes. Or perhaps a magnetar is experiencing a massive flare. The most recent discovery resembles radio emissions from pulsars and magnetars discovered in the Milky Way galaxy in some ways, but the strange new signal looks, well, stranger. You could be thinking at this point, OK, so astronomers have their theories on what causes FRBs, but they haven't cracked the case. When you discover a remarkably different pattern on top of it, you could start to wonder, could it be aliens? Periodic signals from typical celestial sources are extremely common. Magnetars and pulsars are examples of such sources. Astronomers can investigate these flashes to help them unravel other cosmic puzzles if pulsars can actually create FRBs. Researchers have already utilized the rhythms of less enigmatic pulsars in the Milky Way as a kind of cosmic clock to do a variety of tasks including measuring Jupiter's mass, examining the characteristics of interstellar space, and even finding an exoplanet made of diamond. The clues quickly mounted up in the case of the diamond planet, which likewise started with an unusual signal. Astronomers discovered the best explanation for an intriguing change in a pulsar's radio emissions located 4,000 light-years away was the existence of a neighboring planet. According to their investigation, the planet was primarily composed of carbon and oxygen and was sufficiently dense to crystallize as a diamond globe. 
In their exploration of the cosmos, astronomers hope to find additional FRBs similar to this one. Future observatories may find thousands of them every month because the Canadian telescope that found this burst is continually on the lookout for others. Every response we have had regarding FRBs has been met with a plethora of new questions. It also does so with this detection. Because they didn't think the flashes could last much longer, astronomers have only searched for FRBs that last a few milliseconds up until now. However, it's possible that we are missing a large number of FRBs that last for several seconds. Scientists are aware that the story of FRBs is a long one with unexpected twists. Astronomers have found a lot of possible signals over the years. Some of them turned out to originate from as yet undiscovered celestial sources like pulsars, fast rotating dead star carcasses that radiate radio waves into space. There are some signals that astronomers haven't been able to conclusively attribute to a natural source, such as the well-known WOW signal detected by the Ohio State University Radio Observatory, also known as Big Ear, in 1977. It appeared at first that this intensely dazzling assault of radio waves was a genuine SETI discovery, but nobody has been able to confirm it or locate it again. While utilising Australia's Parkes Observatory to analyse Proxima Centauri, Breakthrough Listen, a decade-long hunt for extraterrestrial broadcasts from the nearest million stars, discovered a noticeable signal that they named BLC-1. Observations done between April and May 2019 detected the radio waves. Breakthrough began pointing the Parkes telescope at Proxima Centauri in April 2019. This wasn't necessarily done to look for extraterrestrial life, but rather to learn more about the enormous flares that small red dwarf stars like Proxima frequently emit. Shane Smith, a student at Hillsdale College in Michigan working with Breakthrough, was analysing that data this summer when he noticed BLC-1 emanating from the star. BLC-1 passed all of the tests the Breakthrough team performs to screen out the millions of signals produced by humans. Despite the signal's obscurity, it had small bandwidth, seemed to vary in frequency, and vanished when the telescope focused on something other than Proxima. Four such signals appeared during the next few days, though some have been ruled out as radio interference. According to Seth Shostak of the SETI Institute, if BLC-1 is, against all odds, a postcard from the star system next door, then statistically speaking, the Milky Way must be absolutely stuffed with communicative civilizations. In this scenario, our galaxy would contain more than half a billion societies, which sounds a lot. Since the discovery, the team has re-examined Proxima Centauri, but has not discovered anything. In addition to keeping the Parkes telescope pointed at Proxima, researchers are developing new tests to identify the source of this signal. It's terrible that after more than 80 years of searching for extraterrestrial radio transmissions as part of the SETI program, utilizing a variety of radio telescopes, we haven't yet discovered any proof of extraterrestrial communications. But perhaps we were looking in the wrong places. In a recent study, Researchers from the University of Edinburgh suggest that extraterrestrials would be able to broadcast quantum communications throughout the entire galaxy without losing any data. It seems reasonable that alien intelligence is even slightly more advanced in technology than we might have figured out quantum communication, even though it is a relatively new endeavour for humanity and we still have a lot of bugs to iron out. Quantum computers use quantum bits, often referred to as qubits, to carry information in a more complicated manner, as opposed to conventional computers, which use bits to represent a 1 or a 0. Quantum communication may also provide significantly higher security, as well as theoretical computers that are much more potent than even the fastest supercomputers. 
However, it is not without difficulties. In actuality, there are currently few triumphs in quantum communication and more obstacles. Decoherence is one of the main obstacles. There is a significant chance that data will be lost along the way because quantum signals depend on the state of a single particle, and reading out that information needs interacting with that particle on the other end. In essence, a quantum particle will decohere, and any information it was carrying will be lost if it interacts with other particles between sender and receiver. Building networks across great distances is difficult as a result. However, we have recently made considerable progress. Despite the significant obstacles on Earth, quantum signals sent over space move more easily. This is primarily due to the fact that space is essentially empty. There is often only one atom per cubic centimeter in the zone between stars, and in some places, the density is even lower. This implies that there is a good probability for a signal to travel across the galaxy without being interfered with by other particles. Researchers figured out how far an X-ray signal could travel before it became decoherent in interstellar space. Their findings were so incredibly promising. They discovered that a signal via space might reach more than the length of our galaxy. Yet, quantum communications on Earth struggle to travel very far at all. As more FRBs are discovered, researchers expect to understand their characteristics better and try to pinpoint their genesis. But for the time being, it continues to be a contentious and mysterious issue. The best method for us to answer the call from aliens, if they are out there, is probably to look for quantum interactions. Obviously, we can't travel faster than the speed of light using quantum communications, so any communication would still be slow and over great distances. Let's just hope that when and if we do connect, they're not inviting us to a massacre, but rather to a party. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.